So just a little bit on, on fruit production. Don't have a lot, but I was going to show you some, some different um, sprinklers and, and different designs that you can use. Um, one big thing that I always encourage people, if you're going to go with the large planting, you know, trees are in there for several years, you know, fruit trees, 10, 15, 20 years. If you're going with pecans, you know, those are, might be in there for, for 40, 50, even 100 years. So first thing you want to do is make sure you talk to a designer and make sure that you get the proper design and proper equipment in there so you don't have to go back and change it as those trees grow and get bigger. One thing Steve was just talking about, how that, that drip tight tape kind of snakes around. And if you're in a peach orchard like this and you're mowing the center strips, and this is snaking around because as the temperature gets hot and you're running out cold water through it, it starts to, sh to move and actually acts like a snake. It'll kind of, you can watch it move around, kind of walk. One thing you want to do is start staking this down and make it where it's more straight. And you can do that with some wire, um, like number uh, nine gauge wire, bend it around. We used a lot of um, old welding rods and just bend them and make a U shape, stick them in the ground. And that helps a lot to, to keep that straight. I was the mow boy and I really hated every time I'd run over one because then I have to go and fix it. So we figured out real quick that a good way to just keep that straight. And the other thing it does, if you have emitters like this, Take, or this here, you can see those little pop-in emitters, and there's one here and one here. Well, if that starts to snake around, your emitters might not be right there next to the tree. And so by staking it, you can put that water exactly where you want it, next to the tree. Here's another method you'll see some people do whenever the trees are young, they'll start with a small little circle around the tree, and then as that tree gets larger, they'll expand and put more drippers around the tree. If you got a few trees, this is a great way. Here's another example of that. This is, this is actually Steve's little orchard in his backyard. And you can see you got the little drippers around each of the trees. This is a very good way to wet the area around the trees. So you get good uniformity of that water. In a pecan orchard, this is kind of the typical type of irrigation you might see. But you notice on this picture, these trees are fairly young. They're only about a year old. This gentleman, actually, last year, because it was so hot and he's losing so much to evaporation, he actually replaced all these heads and went to a micro-sprinkler next to the tree. So he's getting water right to the tree where it needed it instead of trying to cover the entire ground. And he actually cut his pumping costs by about a third because he's pumping a third less water. And as the trees get larger, he'll move up sizes on those micro sprinklers. So that's something to think about. He thought this was the way to go when he first designed it. And as you can see, within a year, he was replacing all those heads and incurring a lot more cost. Drip, perfect um, for, for orchards. This can be laid above ground, but if it's in an orchard setting, a lot of people are putting it subsurface, below ground. And you can actually put this, in our orchard we have it as deep as 20 inches. I've seen some as deep as 24 to 28 inches. So you're putting that water right in the rooting zone of that tree. So you're not watering the grass um, if you're letting it grow around the trees. You're actually watering the, the root system of that tree. And with these little emitters where they're putting out the exact same amount of water throughout your system, you're ensured that your trees are getting exactly what they want and what they need. Um, here's a little orchard, pecan orchard, with a little bubbler right next to the tree. These, this, will, this grower is going to use these little bubblers for the first probably three or four years, and then he's going to go to a sprinkler that will be away from the tree a little bit. But this way, with these little bubblers, he can water right there next to the tree. He's got a little berm built around the trees. He's trying to put on about five to eight gallons of water once a week, twice a week, depending on the weather. And he's only, he's keeping that tree alive and keeping it growing. These bubblers can also be used on larger trees, especially like um, peaches and um, apples where the root system's not quite as, as deep as pecan. See this here's a little larger peach tree. And this bubbler's placed right there close to the tree 
and that street's doing real, very well. Here's a little wobbler. Um, they, that water comes up and hits this and kind of wobbles that top and it creates a pattern. It's not a uniform pattern each time, but as it goes around, you have uniform distribution with that water. The nice thing about this, if you have some problems with maybe high bicarbonates or calcium or something that you might have some buildup, uh, this here has a bigger orifice right here and causes, so you don't have that plugage in, in the um, emitters right there. Here's another sprinkler that we see a lot used underneath um, trees in an orchard setting. It sprays out, you can get these to range from anywhere from about six foot cir diameter circles up to about 28 foot diameter circles. Here's another picture of just a different type. These are a little bit more micro sprinkler. Um, you can see it's got a little finer mist pattern to it. I think I got a better picture one here in a minute. Here's one that's kind of on the verge of being micro sprinkler, but almost to uh, the old impact sprinkler type. Throws out a little bit more water, but these are used in orchards too. Here's one that's a real good picture of that micro sprinkler. See those, that nice fan of water going out. And remember Steve was talking about um, freeze protection in trees and fruit trees. These can definitely be used instead of the big impact sprinklers. We actually use some of these in a research orchard, put them on stakes, put them up into the tree on bamboo stakes and had good uniform uh, distribution of that water over the tree to freeze it to protect the, the crop during a, a late freeze event. There's another picture. Um, this, this, I won't tell you where this is at, but it was a research orchard. And they put these nice sprinkler heads in and then they realized they had problems with um, high bicarbonates and high iron and it was plugging up their emitters. And so they replaced all those nice heads that they were having problems with and they made their own. And this is something you do not want to do because you do not get that uniform distribution of that water. You can't control where it's going, um, how much is coming out of each one. And you can see they just put a plug, put a screw head or a screw in here because this one side was squirting too much water out. This is something you want to avoid. Because if you do something like this, and in this orchard, it's about 40 acre orchard, I can almost guarantee you where the front of the line is going to be a lot wetter than towards the end of that, that line. And that's something they'll have to deal with later on. But this is something I wanted to show you what not to do. <laughs> and if I can re-emphasize, if you're going into a big, big planning, that's going to be there for a very long time. Work with somebody that knows what they're doing, a, co a professional designer, to make sure that you design the system right. Um, there's been several times I've went out to orchards and they're not getting the water on the trees they need and a lot of it's because they did not size the pipe right because they thought they could do it themselves. And then a the professional will come in and look at it and end up having to replace everything that they started with. So if there's anything I can get cross to you, make sure that you, you work with somebody that knows how to design the system properly.